Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're gonna be discussing the hex Fibonacci regression rainbow. Remember, if you like this kind of quantitative, technical, fundamental analysis on hex, pulse chain, and more cryptos, make sure to leave a thumbs up, be subscribed by the end of the video if you aren't already, and let's go ahead and talk about this Fibonacci regression rainbow. So first of all, the elephant in the room, camera's not here as per usual around here. Well, that's because my camera died. I use an external camera, so I have to charge it every few videos or so. And I wanted to knock out a video for you guys, so excuse that you can't see my face. I know I know you, you'll miss me, but let, let's go ahead and talk about this anyways. And the next video, we'll have the camera all charged up, all right? So with the regular regression rainbow that's on lookinthehex.com, you, you know, because we've talked about this, that it's essentially an exponential fit, right? And I've mentioned in the past that really the only curves here that have real, real, and I'm, I'm talking fundamental mathematical significance are the boundaries. So this red curve, which is the exponential fit itself, right? Wh which from the rest of these curves are derived from. So this red one, this red curve is the most fundamental. And before I actually share with you guys the Fibonacci regression rainbow, I want to explain a little bit about how to obtain this. Because I know we've talked about this in a previous video, but for those of you who are new, um, we're almost at 2,000 subscribers, by the way, so let's blast right through that. Thank you guys so much. But for those of you guys who are new, because we do have plenty of new subs, is how did we get this fit, right? So what we essentially did, it's pretty simple. If you notice, there's a pretty clear line you can draw from, um, you know, with these, with these data points, there's a pretty clear, clear support line. And so what we went ahead and did is we, we got data from here, from here, from here, and from here. So we got data from these four regions. I used a couple of days of data points from each of these four regions to pretty much fit a line through it on a log curve. And remember that a line like this on a log curve is actually an exponential curve, excuse me, a line on a log scale is equivalent to an exponential curve on a linear scale. So we're actually drawing an exponential curve here, hence this look over here. And, and what we did to get that data was we simply, again, we got a few days of data from each of those regions of support bouncing off the off this line, right? So these four regions, and we essentially fit a line through it. Pretty simple. A line like this. And like I was explaining earlier, a line on a log scale is equivalent to an exponential curve on a linear scale. And notice how I haven't updated this in so, such a long time that price actually blasted through the top of my graph. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so, so this is essentially the red curve you see. Right, this is this red curve, is the exponential fit. And then what we did is we said, okay, how far extended from this exponential fit has price been in the past? It's super simple, the way you do this is on any given day, you divide your actual price by your fit, by this line. And so that essentially gives you data which maps this, this exponential fit, this line, this purple line, to a simple line at the one level here. And I, I didn't draw it here, but this this graph is essentially price extension from the exponential fit and you can see over up here when price was you know 0 0.006 or so the exponential fit was all the way down here and price was actually about 24x as you can see here 24.37 we've talked about this 24.37x extended from the fit so it's much much clearer here on the website again look in hex.com and this is essentially how far extended from the exponential fit. This red curve is price. So effectively, it maps this angled regression rainbow to a flat regression rainbow so that you can better understand where price is relative to these levels, if that makes sense. And th so this price extension from exponential fit being 2437 gave me the idea to plot this upper boundary, which is simply 24.37x extended from our exponential fit. And so this pink curve, even though it's, you know, fit to one data point, 
I guess the fact that it's fit to one data point uh, makes it less significant than say this red curve, right? Like who's to say we're actually ever to reach this pink curve again? That's that's speculative, okay? Just pointing that out that any curve fit to just one or two data points isn't as significant as something like this red curve, which is fit to you know four clusters of data points, so weeks of data, as opposed to like a single day. And I was on a live stream with Crypto Coffee the other day, and he pointed out a great, great point when we were discussing the fact that yeah, only the boundaries red and pink have mathematical significance. He very intelligently pointed out. Well, the midline does as well, right? The pink curve. And yes, that's actually true because it's simply the, you know, the midpoint, right? Of, of these two. So if the boundaries have mathematical significance, then so does the midpoint curve. And with that in mind, I was explaining how you could say that this orange and the yellow and the blue and the purple don't have as much mathematical significance other than the fact that they're uh, equidistant, right? From each other on a log scale. And that was the model, right? Where only the boundaries and the midline had mathematical significance. But again, Crypto Coffee, shout out to him, very intelligently pointed out, what if you gave them mathematical significance by, instead of making them equidistant from each other, making them along a Fibonacci scale? And that was a fantastic idea. And we actually went ahead and did that. So as opposed to this, where you have these, you know, these curves equidistant from each other, we actually did a Fibonacci regression rainbow, where now, if you look at this chart over here, and we might actually add this to look in hex.com. My, my, I guess my, not dilemma, but what I'm wondering is, should I make a whole new little, little block for it, or should I include it in the regression rainbow? I think it might make sense to just include it in the regression rainbow because it is a regression rainbow at the end of the day. Maybe here include, you know, uh, that these are, this is an equidistant model. And then beneath this, a new section that says the Fibonacci, uh, Fibonacci scaled model, Fibonacci, uh, Fibonacci regression rainbow is the best name I have for it right now. But what that essentially looks like is this, right? And you can see that these, these lines are not equidistant from each other, meaning they're not the same distance away from each other to the naked eye, right? And this is because it uses the same boundaries and the same midline. So the red, the green, and the pink curve are exactly the same as they are on a regular regression rainbow. However, now these orange, yellow, blue, and purple curves actually have mathematical significance in the sense that they are on a Fibonacci scale. So if you hover above this, once I actually include this, in you know on the website then you'll be able to see something like this where this is simply the zero level the 0.236 level 38.2 percent fibonacci 50 percent 61.8 percent fibonacci level 78.6 percent fibonacci level and then the 100 percent and so if you're familiar with these levels you know exactly what i'm talking about if not fibonacci analysis is it's something that you can do on a chart, actually. Let's go ahead and share it with you real quick. There's actually a tool, Fib Retracement. Some people like to place it at all-time low, all-time high, and see levels of significance. And you can see you have your 0.236, 38.2%, 50%, 61.8%, 78.6%, and 100%. And so you have these levels of significance, which are mathematically significant as opposed to the way we had our uh, previous regression rainbow and it manifests like this where now as i said before the red curve green curve and pink are in the exact same spots so those didn't change however these kind of intermediary levels are significant which i think is very cool i think i actually like this a little bit more just because it gives the whole model a bit more robustness i don't know if that's the word but it gives the entire model more mathematical significance in my opinion and so again yeah i think i'll include this in the uh, on the actual website i think it'd be pretty cool so be on the lookout for that probably by the end of of tonight when you're watching this video if not going into this weekend and speaking of which before we actually sign off i have a really cool live stream planned for sunday so be on the lookout for that be subscribed to the channel and turn on the bell 
because on Sunday at, I believe, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 3 p.m. PST, I'll be going live with Joe Paris. I think that's how you pronounce his name, but let's go ahead and find Joe on Twitter so you can see who I'm talking about. And this guy is a crypto finance and entrepreneur self-made millionaire. And if you go to his YouTube channel, he's absolutely killing it. He has 32.4K subs. He reached out on a comment actually saying, if, um, if I'm to monetize, which I, I have decided that I'm going to due to the overwhelming support, um, let's actually go see if we can find his comment. But he commented something really, really interesting. He said, can I actually find him by name? Hmm. Anyways, he commented something along the lines of, uh, YouTube pushes out your content more if you monetize. And I actually didn't know that. So I respond here it is run the ads. YouTube pushes out content from channels that run ads more. It's a win for you to earn money and a win for the community because more people will see your videos. Ever since I monetized my channel, my numbers have been so much better. And as you can see, he has over 30,000 subs. So definitely he's killing it. And I do trust the validity of this statement. And I tell him, you know, I didn't know that. It's really cool. Even more incentive to do so. You have a beast of a channel. Would love to do an interview if you're up for it. I shot him an email and we set it up for this Sunday, 3 p.m. PST. So I think that'll be really cool. He seems like a great guy over email discussing how we're going to cover the fundamentals and the technicals on Pulse Chain. I believe Hex as well, but mainly Pulse Chain because it's kind of a new thing and a, lot, a huge opportunity for not only his audience, but obviously all of us to get in on something from the ground when it's just starting. And so shout out to Joe. Here he is on Twitter. Here he is on YouTube. Uh, we're going to have our, our live stream. So that'll bring a lot of eyes, hopefully, to both of our audiences. And with that said, I do appreciate you watching. Let's go ahead and get past 2,000 subscribers. We're so freaking close. Again, thank you guys for the support. Leave a comment below on what you think. Do you think, you know, on your, on your thoughts on this Fibonacci regression rainbow, do you think I should just add it to the regression rainbow block on the site or should I make a new one? I'm leaning more towards just including it within this one, but I'd love to hear your thoughts regardless. Again, thanks for the support. Before I end the video, actually one huge thing I can't believe I almost didn't mention. If you go to hex.com and then, and shout out to crypto Vince on Twitter for pointing this out. If you go to the pages and links of hex.com and you see hex stats and data, you actually see look in hex.com in the link section. I'm absolutely honored and blown away that Richard, his team, uh, on the website would include this super super cool and shout out to Richard again he actually followed me on Twitter yesterday which absolutely made my night amazing guy uh, does just incredible things for the world built what I consider to be the best cryptocurrency in the world so far and probably for a while to come and then with pulse chain incoming this guy's just an absolute beast serial entrepreneur self-help author founder of a $30 billion cryptocurrency, just absolutely the giving tree, right? As he likes to say, um, or is that funny tweet, the giving tree? I don't know. You guys know what I'm talking about, but yeah, with that said, I do appreciate you watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.